Hi everyone, I'm Madison Estes, and today I'll be reviewing my favorite bizarro love story, Stacking Doll, by Carlton Malik III. In this story, Benjamin is in love with Yanaria, a girl who is part of a race of people known as the Matryoshkins, who have smaller people living inside of them. Essentially, he is in love with the human version of a Russian nesting doll. In this world, relationships between humans and Matryoshkins is practically unheard of, but they are determined to get married despite protests from his friends and her family. In order to get married, they must successfully complete the trial. This is a Matryoshkin tradition where couples lock themselves inside of a house for a few days in order to introduce each other to all of the people that are living inside of them. Benjamin has no idea what he's getting into. He naively thinks that he's going to love all of Yanaria's inner layers as much as he loves her. Each person brings new problems and challenges into the story. And if Benjamin and Yanaria are going to be together, he has to learn to love all of her inner people as much as he loves her, no matter how awful or terrifying they are. This story moves really fast. Each chapter introduces a new person that lives inside Yanaria, so the more I talk about these characters, the more spoilers you're going to get. If you haven't read Stacking Doll yet, I highly recommend doing so and then coming back and watching the rest of this video, because there's going to be a lot of spoilers from this point on. Vera is the first person inside Yanaria that we meet. Vera is Yanaria's wild side, or so Benjamin thinks. Oh, Benjamin, if you only knew you're about to see her real wild side in a few chapters. Vera is more crass than Yanaria, but she's also more sexually uninhibited, and Benjamin finds that he really enjoys having sex with Yanaria's inner layer. Although technically, I suppose he's always having sex with her inner layer. Vera represents the slightly uninhibited side of someone that we see once we start really getting to know someone. And this personality is still usually pretty fun and likable because it's only slightly deeper than the surface personality that we present to the world. I think that most of us can relate to the idea of falling in love with someone when we meet them and then falling even deeper in love with someone whenever we start seeing their true self or at least the true self that we see during the good times. But of course it can't be that easy and smooth, right? As anyone who has ever been in a serious relationship knows, once you start really getting to know someone, you'll see their ugly side. And the next layer, Pavel, has some serious issues. First of all, Pavel is a dude, which comes as an unpleasant surprise to Benjamin, who didn't know that Yanaria had a man inside of her. Wait. Pavel and Benjamin get off to a rocky start whenever Pavel suggests having sex with Benjamin and Benjamin quickly shoots the idea down. Pavel brushes it off and acts like it's no big deal until after they have a couple of drinks when suddenly it is a big deal. It's a huge deal. In fact, if Benjamin doesn't have sex with him, he wants to call off the trial completely. I think Pavel is meant to represent our more selfish tendencies. He wants what he wants and he whines until he gets it. Not a very attractive facet of one's personality, but I think to some extent we all have selfishness in us. It's just up to us not to let it ruin our relationships or hurt the people that we love. I think that Pavel represents the vanity part of one's psyche. Pavel seems more upset by the idea that Benjamin isn't attracted to him than he is to the idea of not having sex. He also seems super offended that under the right circumstances, like if Gennaria got really fat, Benjamin might not be attracted to her either. So I think Pavel definitely represents vanity, or maybe the idea of getting past superficial appearances. The next person inside Yanaria is Ekaterina, an alien-like creature who has the lower half of an octopus. She is a fishy crybaby. She cries the entire time until Benjamin finally agrees to have sex with her. Turns out when she orgasms, she ejects an acid-like substance. And because this is bizarro, it comes from her nipples. Benjamin is rightfully ticked off that she didn't tell him that she does that, and so she cries some more. They finally make up whenever Benjamin confesses that even though he does think that she's kind of smelly and gross sometimes, he still loves her despite those flaws. Which is what all women want to hear, right? Just kidding. If you tell your girlfriend that, you're sleeping on the couch tonight. Trust me, girls want to be told that they are beautiful and wonderful all the time. And if they tell you otherwise, they're lying. It's a trap. Do not back down from your claim that she is the most beautiful, best-smelling girl that you have ever met in your entire life. I repeat, do not back down. After they make up, she reveals the next layer, Oksana, which is a black, slimy creature with red eyes that hisses at him and then runs off. Benjamin is terrified of this creature and even considers trying to leave the trial, but he doesn't have a way to escape or call for help. He is stuck there for days until finally he comes across the husk of this creature, it turns out that this layer had opened up and revealed the next when he wasn't even around. Simply by avoiding this layer was he able to move on to the next. The next layer is Savita, a cockroach-like insect. 
It is disgusting and hideous, but soft and warm, so they end up snuggling. Because what else can you do when your girlfriend is secretly an insect besides cover yourself with her hard exoskeleton? After snuggling for a while, the insect layer cracks open, revealing Dominica, which is basically Inaria's soul. Inaria's soul tells him that they are soulmates and that he passed the trial and that they are meant to be together. Dominica does a good job of explaining what Inaria's inner personalities are meant to represent for those of us who are a little bit distracted by the fact that one of Inaria's inner personalities seemed to be trying to kill Benjamin so that we couldn't focus on subtext. She says, when I'm Oksana, I just like to be left alone. You don't have to do anything for me then. To prove that you love me, you just have to let me be. Oksana clearly represents our almost animal-like instinct to isolate or lash out whenever we're feeling hurt or vulnerable. And I like that the solution was as simple as giving her space. So often in stories and in real life, giving someone space is seen as a precursor to the relationship ending, or it means that the relationship is in trouble. And I like that it was presented in this story as being a healthy behavior and even essential to maintaining the relationship. Dominica also explains, Whenever I'm Savita, I don't want to talk or even think. All I want to do is snuggle. Mood. Beneath Dominica is another layer, one that not even Yunaria knows about because it turns out she's preggers. The last layer is Yunaria and Benjamin's baby. Oh, won't her conservative parents be proud. So after the trial ends, Benjamin and Yunaria get married and they have a super huge wedding that they can't afford because people in love lack rational thought. They also have a really long honeymoon and Benjamin is able to get along with Yunaria and all of the people inside of her and they live happily ever after. Not a bad ending for a Carlton Mellick novel. In fact, it's pretty darn cheery. The only thing I didn't like in this story was Pavel. For some reason, I have no problem with Oksana attacking Benjamin because I feel like Oksana isn't capable of higher thought, but Pavel is. And Pavel's not just selfish, but he's kind of manipulative too, saying things like, well, if you loved me, you would do this. That just doesn't sit right with me. If I was Benjamin, I would have never have seen Yunaria's freaky deaky layers because after Pavel, I would have been out the door. But, you know, maybe that says more about me than the story. Maybe we're all a little selfish and manipulative, and my inability to cope with these awful aspects of human behavior, plus my zero tolerance for BS, is exactly why I'm single. Nah, Pavel's just a <laughs> Other than Pavel, I really liked all of the people in Unaria once I understood them, and I feel like that is the moral of the story. True love isn't loving your partner at their best, but getting to know them at their worst and loving them anyways. I felt like this story had a super sappy ending that felt very appropriate considering the subject matter. And overall, this was just a really satisfying story. If you liked this video and want to see more Bizarro book reviews, writing advice, or horror reviews, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll be reviewing more Bizarro books this month. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.